events of this hour on VTV News. Prime Minister participates in Vietnam-South Korea cooperation enhancement activities. Later on, Industrial Park provides new livelihood for ethnic people. In a world news, Iran's Constitutional Council confirms presidential election results. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning. It is currently 8 a.m. local time, and you're tuning into 30 minutes of VTV News. I'm Didin Lee with the latest updates. Now, within the framework of his official visits to South Korea on Monday, Prime Minister Phan Ming Ching attended the Vietnam Republic of Korea Business Forum with the participation of hundreds of large corporations and businesses from the two countries. At the forum, the South Korean Minister of Trade, Industry, and Energy proposed that businesses from both countries expand cooperation in trade and investment to achieve a bilateral trade turnover of 100 billion U.S. dollars by 2025 and 150 billion U.S. dollars by 2030. Prime Minister Pham Min Chin expressed appreciation for South Korean businesses' contributions to Vietnam's socioeconomic development. The Prime Minister shared Vietnam's development strategy focusing on three fundamental elements and six key tasks. These include independent foreign policy, economic development, building a self-reliant economy, international integration, maintaining a foreknost defense policy, preserving cultural identity, ensuring social security, and promoting a clean, strong political system with anti-corruption efforts. These fundamental factors ensure that investors can confidently invest in Vietnam which has political and social stability, social security, social justice, and business equality. We aim to jointly develop and create new values, leveraging the unique opportunities, competitive advantages, and diverse potentials of both countries. The Prime Minister highlighted Vietnam's significant achievements in nearly 40 years of innovation. In the first half of this year, GDP growth reached 6.42 percent, with controlled inflation and guaranteed economic stability. Despite a 15 percent increase in electricity demand, Vietnam ensured sufficient supply even during peak days. Observing bilateral cooperation agreements being exchanged, the Prime Minister urged businesses from both countries to expand investments and diversify markets, products, and supply chains. He also called upon South Korean firms to transfer advanced technology, contribute to institutional and policy refinement, support Vietnamese businesses in joining global supply chains, and enhance high-quality human resource training and smart management. Earlier, during a meeting with the South Korean Minister of Trade, Industry, and Energy, Prime Minister Pham Min Chin proposed that South Korea facilitate and expand market access for Vietnamese products into South Korea. The South Korean minister acknowledged that South Korea has the largest amount of investment in Vietnam among Southeast Asian countries, and Vietnam is a key partner for South Korea. He expressed hope for continued government support from both nations to foster strong business development, enhance cooperation, and increase mutual investments. After meeting with South Korean businesses, Prime Minister Phan Ming Ching attended the Vietnam South Korean Labor Cooperation Forum and the Vietnam South Korea Tourism Culture Cooperation Forum. More in this next story. According to reports from the Vietnam South Korean Labor Cooperation Forum, the number of Vietnamese workers going to South Korea is increasing rapidly each year, placing Vietnam among the leading countries sending workers to South Korea. Similarly, the number of South Korean workers in Vietnam has also risen sharply, making South Koreans the largest group of foreign workers in Vietnam, accounting for over 16% of the total immigrant workforce. The chairman of the Korean Human Resources Development Agency highlighted the significant contributions of Vietnamese workers to the development of both countries and expressed confidence that labor cooperation would increasingly focus on training high-quality professionals. Prime Minister Pham Min Chin, speaking at the forum, underscored labor cooperation as a cornerstone of Vietnam-South Korea relations with considerable untapped potential. 
After that, Prime Minister Pham Min Chin attended the Vietnam, South Korea Tourism Culture Cooperation Forum, which was held for the first time with the participation of hundreds of businesses from the two countries. South Korea is currently the number one market sending visitors to Vietnam. In the first five months of this year, the number of tourists between the two countries reached nearly 2.2 million, an increase of 9% compared to the same period in 2019 before the pandemic, showing a complete recovery and an increase in tourism exchanges between the two countries. Speaking at the forum, the Prime Minister said that Vietnam has developed its tourism with the motto, special products, professional services, convenient. Simple procedures, competitive prices, clean and hygienic environment, safe, civilized, and friendly destination. The Prime Minister added that Vietnam is focused on building an advanced culture, rich in national identity, which contributes to a spiritual foundation and important internal strength, ensuring sustainable and appropriate development. The Prime Minister said that Korea's experience and success will be valuable lessons for Vietnam. During his working visit, on Monday, Prime Minister Pham Ming Ching had a meeting with leaders of 20 South Korean firms in Seoul. Take a look. During discussions, leaders of major corporations praised Vietnam's favorable investment climate and appreciated the government's prompt support in overcoming relevant challenges. They affirmed their commitment to long-term investment and outlined plans to expand across sectors such as industry, energy, aviation, finance, banking, IT, medicine, and general investment. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching welcomed the corporation's proposals and emphasized the strong and dynamic bilateral relations between Vietnam and South Korea. He acknowledged the global challenges but highlighted the potential for enhanced economic cooperation. The Prime Minister set ambitious targets of achieving 100 billion US dollars in bilateral trade turnover by 2025 and 150 billion US dollars by 2030. He urged Vietnam's ministries and localities to integrate the cooperation feedback on attracting investment, improving the business environment, and boosting competitiveness into practical development strategies. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching also received leaders from several major Korean corporations, including Chairman of Hyongsung Group, Chairman of Lotte Group, Executive Chairman of Hyundai Motor Group, Chairman of the Korean Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, and CEOs of Industrial Bank of Korea and Doosan Annability Group. During the meetings, the leaders expressed confidence in Vietnam's robust economic development and outlined plans to expand significant investment across various sectors in Vietnam. Hyundai Motor Group's chairman highlighted successful collaboration with Vietnam Thành Công Group and Trường Hải. Prime Minister praised the corporation for their contributions to Vietnam's socio-economic progress and job creation. He encouraged technology transfer localization in production, partnership with Vietnamese firms, and support for their integration into supply chains. He underscored the need for continued human resource development and sustainable practices in Vietnam. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching had a working lunch with the Republic of Korea's experts and scientists in semiconductor and artificial intelligence, or AI, in Seoul on the same day, during which he expressed his hope that they will share their experience and know-how to help the two industries develop quickly and sustainably in Vietnam. He asked Korean experts and scientists to continue contributing their ideas to help Vietnam build accurate incentive mechanisms and strategies that are competitive enough to attract investment and human resources, and develop infrastructure for semiconductor, AI, and related industries. Moving on to other news, National Assembly Chairman Chen Teng Mun met with voters in Hậu Giang province on Monday, announcing the results of the seventh session of the 15th National Assembly. At the meeting, the National Assembly Chair also clarified some issues of concern to voters. More of this in the following. The voters of Hậu Giang province congratulated Chen Teng Mun on being elected National Assembly Chair. They highly appreciated the success of the seventh session, noting that personnel work was conducted strictly in accordance with party regulations and state laws. 
The National Assembly Chair announced that starting Monday, 10 laws and numerous policies directly affected the people would take effect. During the meeting, the National Assembly Chair also addressed and clarifies various issues of concerns to the voters. Kindergarten teachers face significant pressure. It is recommended that the National Assembly and the government consider allowing preschool teachers to retire at the age of 55. The eighth session of the National Assembly, scheduled for October 2024, is expected to review and comment on the draft law on teachers. The Culture and Education Committee has been assigned to consider voters' opinions while verifying and coordinating with drafting agencies to review and evaluate specific retirement benefits for teachers. Please explain the National Assembly's plan to stabilize electricity prices, given that the current method of calculating electricity bills is no longer optimal. In Resolution No. 937, the National Assembly Standing Committee requested the government and the Prime Minister to direct relevant ministries, branches, and localities to study and implement timely adjustments to the retail price of electricity based on actual fluctuations in input parameters. The prompt legalization of retail electricity price management is also needed to remove barriers and ensure energy prices are transparently determined by the market. Noting voters' opinions on establishing specific mechanisms for the provinces of Hậu Giang, Đắk Nông and Điện Viên, the National Assembly Chair stated that the National Assembly will explore priority policies to promote development in these provinces, which still face many challenges. Deputy Prime Minister Le Minh Khai emphasized the critical need to thoroughly understand and substantially implement the tasks and solutions aimed at the rapid and sustainable development of the Mekong Delta. This direction was underscored during the Regional Coordination Council conference held this afternoon in Gamal province. The Deputy Prime Minister further highlighted the importance for localities in the region to prioritize investment projects that can enhance regional connectivity, thereby advancing socio-economic growth. Additionally, efforts must integrate economic growth with cultural and social development, foster the creation of new rural areas, adapt to climate change, achieve sustainable poverty reduction, promote job creation and ensure robust social security measures. Coming up next on VTV News, three decrees on salary and social insurance benefits issued. And later on, Industrial Park provides new livelihood for ethnic people. Welcome back to VTV News Live. Now, continue on with other important updates. The government has recently issued three decrees that regulate salaries, bonuses, and benefits for various groups, effective July the 1st. The minimum wage has been raised to 2.34 million Vietnam dong per month, up from 1.8 million Vietnam dong per month. Pensioners receiving less than 3.2 million Vietnam dong will receive an increase of 300,000 Vietnam dong to 3.5 million Vietnam dong. These changes are aimed at improving the financial well-being of caterers, civil servants, public employees, armed forces, employees under labor contracts, and pensioners receiving social insurance benefits. The Ministry of Public Security will start collecting biometric information including iris scans, voice samples, and DNA from July 1 for individual identification purposes. Accordingly, the biometric information will be added to chip-based citizen ID cards. For the first time, children under the age of 6 can be issued ID cards upon request. The new law on identification is aimed at ensuring information security and safeguarding the privacy of personal information of Vietnamese citizens. 
These biometric specifiers are collected from the registrations of Vietnamese identity card. According to the new law on identification, it only takes about three to five seconds to complete the iris scanning process. The iris scanning is conducted very quickly. I think iris recognition not only provides security and convenience, but will also protect individual privacy. I found the iris can simple and convenient. All personal information is integrated into an ID card. According to the new law, Vietnamese citizen under 14 years old can be issued ID cards upon personal request. Children under the age of six can receive a new ID card through the National Public Service Portal without providing information about identity, characteristic, and biometrics. Each site will be equipped with more than two biometric devices. In addition to these, we'll use various measures to collect biometric information. DNA and voice biometric data will be collected when individuals voluntarily provide them. In addition, citizens can request to integrate their information from health insurance cards, social insurance books, driver licenses, birth certificates and marriage certificates into their new ID card. In response to the National Target Program on Socio-Economic Development in Ethnic Groups and Mountainous Areas for the 2021-2025 period, many localities in Vietnam have implemented various measures to help ethnic people earn a stable income and raise their living standards. Our report from Hai Ha District, one of the most successful localities with a high poverty reduction rate in Guangning Province. More than 3,000 workers are working for this foreign-invested enterprise. About 60% of them are ethnic people. The good salary and favorable working environment are among the contributing factors that have boosted ethnic workers' commitment at Hai Ha Seaport Industrial Park. Traditionally, the Zhao people made a living from the sea, but now many Zhao people prefer working in industrial parks. I started working at this company in 2016. My husband and I can earn more than 780 US dollars per month. After paying for living expenses, we send money home and have some savings to build a new house in the future. As a mountainous district of Guangning Province, Hai Ha District is home to 11 ethnic groups. Local authorities have prioritized vocational training for ethnic people in industrial parks to help them improve their income. Ethnic people are encouraged to work in industrial parks. This is the most effective way to facilitate recruitment for the companies, improve ethnic people's income, and boost the local socio-economy. We've provided ethnic workers with necessary knowledge and skills to perform their job. We highly appreciate the hard work and perseverance of ethnic workers. They have great passion and good technical skills. Therefore, we have assigned workers to different posts in the factory. In the first five months of this year, Hai Ha Seaport Industrial Park attracted nearly 400 million US dollars in foreign direct investment and recruited 1,570 new workers. Ensuring a stable income for workers is one of the most important factors to improve employee engagement and change the lives of local ethnic people. The General Statistics Office, or GSO, and the Government Committee for Ethnic Minority Affairs jointly conducted information collection for a survey on the socio-economic situation of the 53 ethnic groups across the country from July the 1st. The survey's findings will be an important foundation for designing socio-economic development policy for ethnic inhabited and mountainous areas in the 2026 to 2030 period. Information on population, housing, marriage, education, and living conditions of the communities will be collected to make statistical indicators used for the building of socio-economic development policies for rural areas. Hanoi is taking a number of measures to encourage visitors to stay longer during the summer, including improving accommodation by adding a number of four- and five-star hotels, according to the city's Department of Tourism. The city currently has 3,760 lodging establishments with more than 71,200 rooms. The number of ranked hotels and apartments account for 16% of the total. This effort aims to create an interconnected network between management
management agencies, airlines, travel businesses, accommodations and various services such as dining, shopping and entertainment. In the first half of the year, Hanoi welcomed over 14 million visitors, generating tourism revenue exceeding 55.3 trillion Vietnam Dome. This year, Hanoi aims to attract over 27 million visitors, demonstrating its commitment to further growth in tourism. The windy season in Binh Thuận province typically occurs from June to September every year. During this time, the coastline passing through Ham Tien Wort, Phan Thiet City, endures tons of garbage from the sea washing ashore. However, up to now, there has been no effective solutions to limit waste, especially plastic waste flowing into the ocean. Every way hit the shore, bringing garbage with it. Every day, tons of trash come ashore this way. Working in the tourism sector for more than 20 years, this man feels helpless since the amount of garbage has not decreased despite his efforts. During the windy season in Binh Thuận, a huge amount of waste flows to the beaches. Waste coming ashore comes from many sources. As visitors, we try our best to maintain a clean environment and beach. However, one business alone cannot do it. The trash bin were installed here by Bing Business over 10 years ago, when the waste classification movement started to be launched. The trash can is clearly marked as containing organic waste on one side and inorganic waste on the other. In addition to guiding and educating tourists, the staff here are responsible for collecting and sorting waste into categories, recyclable waste, organic waste for composting and others. We collect waste at the resorts and sort it in categories. We collect organic waste for composting to make fertilizers. We need more efforts from relevant agencies and departments to enhance waste management. We must identify the sources of waste and seek measures to process the waste from its sources. As such, ocean waste can be resolved resolutely. From January 1, 2025, people must classify waste at the source. Effective household waste sorting would significantly reduce the amount of waste that needs to be processed, minimizing the release of plastic waste into the environment. This aligns with the Vietnam 2030 goal to reduce plastic waste in the sea and oceans by 70 percent. Coming up next in our world news. Iran's Constitutional Council confirms presidential election results. And later on, Japan launches Earth Observation Satellite on its new flagship H-3 rocket. Now moving on to our world news, Iran's Constitutional Council on Sunday validated the first round's results of the country's 14th presidential election. None of the four candidates secured more than 50 percent of the vote in Friday's election, prompting a second round on July the 5th. According to the spokesman for the council, none of the four candidates vying for the presidency in the first round made any objection to the election results during the legal time frame for voicing complaints. Therefore, the election campaigns could continue until Thursday morning or 24 hours before the runoff. The runoff will feature former Health Minister Mia San Pesekian and former nuclear negotiator Saeed Jalili, the two candidates who garnered the most votes in the first round of the race. Japan successfully deployed an upgraded Earth observation satellite after it was launched on a new flagship H-3 rocket on Monday. According to the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, the H-3 No. 3 rocket lifted off from the Tanigashima Space Center on the southwestern Japanese island and released its payload about 16 minutes later, putting it into a targeted orbit as planned. The Advanced Land Observation Satellite or ALOS-4, is tasked primarily with Earth observation and data collection for disaster response and map making, including for volcanic and seismic activity and other land movements. It is also capable of monitoring military activities such as missile launches with an infrared sensor developed by the Defense Ministry. 
Japan sees a stable, commercially competitive space transport cap capabilities as key to its space program and national security. The Australian government on Monday doubled the visa fee for international students. The latest move aims to rein in record migration that has intensified pressure on an already tight housing market in the country. From July the 1st, the international student visa fee has risen to 1,600 Australian dollars from 710 Australian dollars, while visitor visa holders and students with temporary graduate visas are banned from applying onshore for a student visa. The government said it was also closing loopholes in visa rules that allow foreign students to continuously extend their stay in Australia. The number of students on a second or subsequent student visa spiked by over 30 percent to more than 150,000 in the 2022 to 2023 academic year. The Arctic and subarctic regions are home to many indigenous peoples, including the Inuit, whose lives have been affected by the climate-induced changes that are taking place. Each Inuit community is granted a portion of the annual polar bear harvest quota. However, climate change has turned their lives upside down since the turn of the century, as the Arctic warms nearly four times faster than the rest of the world. Inuit hunters, like Jelmer Hamakin, are indigenous people of Greenland who rely on traditional hunting methods to survive. We can see that the climate has changed. The ice is thinner. Before, we could go to the edge of the ice flow without worrying, the ice was thicker. Declining sea ice has pushed some polar bear populations to their survival limit. Quotas were introduced to slow the decline in polar bear populations, limiting the traditional practices and livelihoods of the Inuit hunters. Today, we have the right to capture 35 polar bears per year. At the end of April, we had already caught them all. Madsen is one of the 10 professional hunters. Only those who live completely from the hunt are allowed to shoot polar bears. But in recent years, many things have changed most of all the diminishing chance of making a living from hunting. Nowadays, there is not much to hunt. With the quotas and everything, it is not working anymore. Due to the lack of income from hunting, we had to think of an alternative. That's why we thought about welcoming tourists. The Inuit are famous for their ability to survive extreme conditions having inhabited the Arctic for millennia. But as the ice recedes, this hard-earned knowledge is being lost. Up next, let's have a look at the weather forecast. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our official website or our YouTube channel or download a mobile app VTV Go for more. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.